Salesforce.com is well known for its CRM capabilities and the ability to have a complete view of all of your customers, the relationships, and it can go far beyond that, extending the abilities right into the platform. And one of the best, best examples of being able to move into a, a platform environment is the ability to add something like a shopping cart into Salesforce. Perhaps you'd like to use the site's technology to create that shopping cart. Now, oftentimes, this is a very expensive endeavor. However, on the App Exchange, you can find some partners that might help you do this in a much more cost-effective manner. One example of this is Ida Apps, and they've come up with an e-store application that will allow you to get an e-commerce uh, site up and running very quickly. Now, this is a light version, and we're going to walk through the test drive now. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, install this directly into my Salesforce production instance. Now, bear in mind, you can install this into your sandbox so that you can test it before you want to run it, but we're going to be running this out of my demo environment. As administrator, put in my username and password, and I'll get ready to install this application. Let me go through the terms and conditions. And Salesforce will show me exactly what's going to be installed with this new e-commerce application. As the administrator, you might want to make sure that you examine exactly what's going to be installed. And once you've reviewed this, simply hit continue. I can set my user permissions now. In this case, I'm just going to grant access to the admin only as I'm installing this into a production instance. But you can select security settings to set it by profile so you can specifically dictate who has access or grant access to all of the users. So I'm going to uh, grant access to just admin and hit next. Now, it'll let me know when the uh, package is ready to install. I'm going to hit install and wait for Salesforce to inform me when this is complete. Now, it may take one or two minutes for this install to complete and you'll be notified by email when it's done. Once you've received that email, the package has been installed, and when I go in to refresh my screen, I'll be able to access the new IDA apps package. So now I'm ready to start updating my production org to access this. The first thing that I'll need to do is go through my IDA setup and start to update things like the product page. So I'll go into my setup area, into customize, products, and now what I need to do is just change the page layout for my products, and I'm going to edit this to add all of my new IDA fields directly into the page layout. Now bear in mind as I go through this that all of these instructions are available from the App Exchange uh, package, and you can walk through this yourself. So I'm going to go in and create a new section, just to keep it separate. And we'll call this Ida. So now I can take all of those fields that we're going to be adding in, and just drop them into that section. I'll also need to add in the page layout. Uh, into the page layout, I will need to add the related list for Ida as well. And we'll drop that in here at the top. Now that's complete, simply need to do the same for cases. So I'll go into my page layout on my cases and do exactly the same process.
So now I've added the two page layouts that I needed to uh, edit and I'm ready to start setting up my sites so that I can configure this site to work with the IDA app. So once you've enabled sites, I can just simply go down into my remote site settings. So under admin setup and security controls, I can go down to my remote site setting and create the appropriate link. Now you have to pay careful attention to your address. I'm on NA1. You could be on any different server, but I'm going to create a brand new remote site here. My remote site name, we'll just call this Ida. And the URL is set for my NA1 instance. So now I've configured my remote site. I need to actually set up the site itself. So now to set the site, I go down to create, sorry, develop, and go into my site where I can now create a new site for the IDA apps. So I'm going to set up my new site here and register that domain. I highly recommend that you read through the help and training before you set up your domain. But now that I'm ready to go, I can create a brand new site. So we'll call this one our, uh, our IDA app. I can put in a description if I like. I can see my default web address and I'm going to make this active. So now I need to set my various different uh, site pages that have been downloaded with the IDA app. Because this is the free version, you'll automatically have one set up for you. But of course, you can create all of your own sites. So I'll do a search for IDA. And I'm going to set my home page for the IDA home. My site template, again, I'll select the IDA template. And I'm ready to save that particular page. Included with the package was a series of Visual Force pages, which I can now go in and enable. So I'll just click on Edit under my Visual Force page. I'll find the sites that I need to add for IDA, and I'm going to add those in to be enabled. Now I just simply go back to the site that I was working on, which was the IDA site, and I need to change some of my settings as far as public access goes. So I'm going to click on public access settings, edit, and now I need to change a couple of my standard objects. Now bearing in mind, I'm working from a fairly complex demo environment. Yours might be quite a bit more simple. So when I need to uh, change some of my settings as far as public options go, just need to scroll down to my standard objects and on products, I'm going to give them read access. And on cases, I'm going to give read and create access. This will allow my public settings to be changed. Hit save. And I have one more step before I'm ready to enable the application. We've added an Apex class in. So I go to the enabled Apex class, hit edit. And I'm going to select the IDA service from the side panel. and hit save. So now what I've done is gone through, selected the site that I'm going to use, taken my Visual Force pages, made them visible, changed my public access, and created a new Apex class so all of this can be accessed through Salesforce sites. Now it's just a matter of going to the IDA setup and creating a brand new setup. I'm just going to call this a test and I'm going to set the activation date for today and we'll push this out for the end of the month. So I can set up my test site. Once I'm ready to uh, enable this, simply click on create sample site. It'll let me know the sample date is going to be deleted and I'll say OK. And I'm ready to launch. So I've now set up my sample site with the product information that I have. So in order to view this, all I need to do now is go back to the site that I created and we can test the functionality. 
So I'm going to go back into setup, back down to develop, the sites, and I can click the URL for my IDA app. So this is the default setting that we have. Obviously now we can go in and start to change the structure, but this is my live site as it exists on my sites uh, page that I've set up. Now this sample data, as we browse through, we can have a look at all of the images that are being displayed. We can shop in different fashions. Uh, we can go in and sort in different ways. We can uh, organize the, uh, the cart. We can check out using uh, PayPal, um, using credit cards, etc. But all of this really just exists right in Salesforce. This is a Salesforce site. So if we quickly go back into Salesforce, and we'll jump into our sales side, I'll be able to look at my products that were installed. And sure enough, all of my products are here, the different bouquets and descriptions. So I can look at these products, determine what I'd like to change, the descriptions, and all of these areas that we added earlier into the product detail are going to be modifiable. So now when I go back into my flower store, I can have a look at all of the different Visual Force pages. Again, fully running on salesforce.com, a very simple and easy way to get e-commerce functionality. The next step of setting up the PayPal, Google checkout, uh, etc., uh, can be found from the uh, App Exchange website. What we installed here with the Lite version allows you to integrate the e-commerce immediately into your sales channel using your products. But if you want full open source code to change anything, you would have to go with the, uh, uh, the full version of IDA app, which you can find on the App Exchange as well.